name given to the choicest brand of Australian butter, and very appropriately too, because dairying in Australia, like the kangaroo, is progressing by leaps and bounds. Nature has endowed all states of Australia with beautiful pastures, and it is to this fact, as well as to the congenial climate, that Australia owes its wonderful progress in dairying. This progress is all the more remarkable when we realize that 145 years ago, there were no cattle in Australia. It was in 1788 that the first dairy herd comprising four cows and one bull was introduced, and from this small beginning has grown a vast industry with herds totaling over two and a half million dairy cattle. Of butter alone, Australia produces annually over 170,000 tons, 90,000 tons of which is exported. Truly a wonderful record of expansion. Australia's congenial climate makes it possible for the dairy herds to be grazed the whole year round on the abundant natural pasture, which directly benefits their milk as contrasted to the herds of other countries, which are stall-fed throughout the winter. It has been proved that butter from Australian cattle, fed on natural pastures in radiant sunshine, is richer in that mysterious ingredient known to science as vitamin A. Australian dairymen are constantly striving to improve the productivity of their herds, and in this they are encouraged and assisted by the government. Expert advice is available, and financial assistance is also provided in extending, extending the practice of herd testing. Herd testing is the ascertaining of the percentage of butter fat content of the milk of each individual member of the herd, but the aim is the improvement of the quality at the same time increasing the quantity of the milk. And now for the milking. Cleanliness, scrupulous cleanliness, is the watchword of every Australian dairy farm, and the milking sheds are regularly visited by government inspectors. Now, whilst some dairies retain the old hand milking methods, the larger farms have introduced the more modern milking machines, which handle more efficiently the increased production of the larger herds. After the milk has been drawn from the cows, it is taken to this machine, and the cream, separated by centrifugal force, is soon ready for transport to the butter factory. The skim milk remains, of course, but it is not wasted. Breakfast is served for the calves. This young potty evidently prefers a change of diet. And now the cream in its tin steel containers of eight to ten gallons is transferred to the pickup point where later it is collected by the motor lorry from one of the many modern butter factories which have been established in all the dairying districts throughout the length and breadth of Australia. The principal activities associated with dairying are centered around the butter factory, which is the hub of the industry in its particular locality. Here is part of a fleet of motor lorries employed by just one factory bringing in the daily supply of cream. Just note the number of cans received. The cream is now ready to commence its journeyings through the various processes by which it will be transformed into wholesome and delicious butter. Each can must be carefully checked in and recorded. The cream is then weighed and samples are taken from each can for testing purposes. These samples are subjected to tests in order to determine the butterfat content. You see, the results of these tests are important because upon them is based the price which the farmer receives for his cream. The cans are passed on to the blending vat 
into which the cream is tipped through a fine strainer. The empty cans are then subjected to a powerful steam jet, which automatically washes and sterilizes them. In one revolution of the washer, cans are cleansed by boiling plastic water, rinsed with clean hot water, and dried thoroughly with hot air. This machine deals with 800 cans an hour. And now, thoroughly cleansed, the cans are ready for return to the farmer. The cream is pumped into pasteurizers and brought to a temperature of 185 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature which destroys germ life. Pasteurization is a process which enables the butter to keep for a long time in order that it may travel to Great Britain and other parts of the world without deterioration. It is now pumped to the top of a pipe cooler and flows by gravity over the coils into a tray below. Cold water circulates through the pipes and the cream passing over them reaches the tray at a temperature of 80 degrees. Now the cream is lifted to the top of a second large coil cooler through which very cold brine is being pumped and this rapidly cools it until finally it reaches the cream storage vat at 40 degrees. In the six-ton vats where it remains overnight, the cream is thoroughly blended and cooled, being stirred by large coil agitators through which very cold brine is pumped. The coil agitator is so designed that it can be dismantled and thoroughly cleansed immediately the maturing vat is emptied. The cream is run into large wooden churns where the butter is made. Generally speaking, these churns have a capacity of about two tons of cream, which makes about one ton of butter. The churn having been revolved, and after the buttermilk has been drawn off, salt is added to bring up the flavor of the butter. These churns are worked electrically. The churn is again revolved at slow speed. It sets of rollers working up and consolidating the butter into a compact mass. The actual manufacturing process is completed and the butter is now ready for use. This large tray is inserted and half a ton of butter is removed from the churn and taken to the packing room. Butter that must eventually find its place on the tables of the most fastidious overseas consumer. The churns are then washed out with a steam hose. If there is one commodity always available in a butter factory, it is boiling water and plenty of it. Cleanliness, first, last and always, is insisted upon. In the packing room, the butter is packed in parchment-lined white pine boxes, each containing 56 and a quarter pounds. Standardized according to test for moisture and salt content to suit the requirements of the market for which it is intended, the butter is transferred to the cold storage room. Until it arrives at its destination overseas, the temperature of the butter throughout its journey, however long, never varies. It is conveyed to the ship side in specially insulated trucks. In the cool stores, Commonwealth government inspectors grade the butter according to quality. A very rigid inspection is carried out by highly qualified experts, and the certificate issued by the government is the buyer's guarantee of quality. Samples of the butter are also submitted to water content and chemical tests by experts. The hallmark of purity is the kangaroo brand which is stamped on the white pine boxes. Australia now exports about 10 million pounds worth of butter every year. Its greatest market is the United Kingdom. 
Kangaroo butter is an empire product for an empire table. Its manufacture employs approximately three quarters of a million people, and all of them are British.